My name is Lisa. In March of 1994, I was diagnosed with a severe case of mononucleosis caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. The virus stayed active and did a lot of cardiac and gastrointestinal damage and began having vague symptoms of multi-system problems. None of my illnesses at that time were visible. I never fully got better. Three years after the fact, in April of 97, I went to Mayo Clinic. And at that time, they were able to diagnose the dysautonomia. I began developing other heart rhythm problems. In October of 1998, I got my first pacemaker. I'm now on my second. I take antiarrhythmics to help with my arrhythmias. I had a diagnostic thoracoscopy. A lot of tests were run and it was determined I do have heart failure. I've had IV access for 13 years. My central line is for administration of nausea meds, fluids, and I've been on TPN when necessary. I also have chronic pain, and this is perhaps the one area where I have been judged most harshly. Those with chronic pain, uncontrolled by non-narcotic drugs, find that in undergoing opiate therapy, there is a great deal of bias, stigma, judgment, rejection. You're treated like an addict, a junkie, a drug seeker, a liar, a manipulator, faker, that you're not genuinely suffering. It took me three years to agree to go to the pain clinic because good clinical student that I was, I was trained to be opiophobic. School was my everything. I reveled in being good at something, a security, a future, be able to take care of my parents, which was my dream. And I lost everything to a vague diagnosis. But as long as you have a pulse, you have a purpose. There are still many good things in life. I believe in finding a positive point in every day, no matter how much pain and misery and suffering there is, there's always a ray of light in there somewhere. I have a wonderful loving husband who has medical problems too, so he understands. When I first got sick, it was a very different world. There was no IDA. There was no support, and there was infinite judgment. This is why the work that the IDA does is so precious to me. We need to raise awareness. We need to reach out to the people who are lying in bed right now in different places in the world in despair and hurting and terrified because they've sought help, and the very people meant to help them have turned them away the suffering that those who are ill go through is devastating, even more so with a rare disease, a misunderstood disease, or one which you cannot outwardly see. This is why the IDA is so important, and from my heart I thank you for all of your work, and I am here to fight with you to raise awareness and advocate for everyone whose life is affected by an invisible illness.